Welcome to Hollywood Graveyard. Today we continue our tour filmed by you, the Hollywood Graveyard community, visiting famous and historical graves in your neck of the woods. Together we'll cross the country and the oceans to pay our respects to legends around the globe, like Marlena Dietrich, Jim Morrison, Greta Garbo, and many more. My friends, the time is yours. Our viewer's special continues. And you know, though we have a lot more to see here in the States, I've been itching to get out and see the world. So today, Hollywood Graveyard goes global. Don't worry, we'll be back to finish up our coverage here in the US. But for the next two parts, we'll be stamping our passport around the world. If you haven't done so already, be sure to check out parts one and two. Our first stop as we make our way around the world is not too far from home. In fact, the beautiful island of Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory. Here in San Juan, right up against the blue waters of the Caribbean to the north, is Santa Maria Magdalena de Pazzi's cemetery, a colonial cemetery founded in 1863 and home to many prominent Puerto Ricans. If we follow the main entrance straight in, we reach the monument to the Ferrer family. Here lies Jose Ferrer. He was an actor of stage and screen, the first Hispanic actor to win an Academy Award for his performance as Cyrano de Bergerac in the 1950 film of the same name. A few years earlier he had won a Tony for his theatrical performance of Cyrano. Ferrer also garnered esteem for his directorial efforts, both of stage and screen productions, like the play The Four Poster and the film The Shrike. Later in life he could be seen in films like Dune. Ferrer was inducted into the American Theatre Hall of Fame in 1981 and lived to be 80. The statues here represent a young Jose and his two sisters. Also here is Jose's son, Miguel Ferrer, whose mother was Rosemary Clooney, making him George Clooney's cousin. Miguel was also an actor, a familiar face and voice in film and television. His film roles range from Robocop to Traffic, and even the voice of Shan Yu in Mulan. On television he played an FBI agent in Twin Peaks, Dr. Macy on Crossing Jordan, and Assistant Director Granger on NCIS Los Angeles, a role he played until his death from cancer at the age of 61. He rests here with his father and grandmother. South of here is the Cathedral of San Juan Bautista. Herein we find the tomb of Juan Ponce de Leon. He was a Spanish explorer known for being Puerto Rico's first governor, and led the first known European expedition of Florida. Popular culture remembers Ponce de Leon for seeking out the Fountain of Youth in his expedition to Florida, though most historians believe that his primary motives in the expedition were gold and the expansion of the Spanish Empire. Given the charge to colonize Florida, Ponce de Leon returned some years later with hundreds of settlers. They were attacked by the indigenous people, and Ponce de Leon was mortally wounded, dying at the age of 47. Still further southeast we reach Buxeda Memorial Park. Straight in from the middle entrance is the family plot where we find the final resting place of Raul Julia. He was an actor born and raised right here in Puerto Rico. He began performing in local nightclubs when Orson Bean convinced him to try his hand at acting in the States. He found work in off-Broadway plays like King Lear and Dracula, but audiences will always remember him as the quirky and passionate Gomez Adams in the Adams Family and Adams Family Values films. No, oh, Tish, that's French. Oui. Other notable roles include The Burning Season, which earned him a Golden Globe, and as Bison in Street Fighter. In 1994 he suffered a stroke and died several days later at just 54. Hello to our friendly neighbors to the north. We're in Padre Shalom Cemetery in Ontario, Canada. Here is the final resting place of Corey Haim. He was an actor, one of the major teen idols of the 80s, often seen alongside another famous Corey, Corey Feldman. The two Coreys, as they were known, 
would star together in several films, including their best known film, The Lost Boys, in 1987. Hey man, read this. I told you, I don't like horror comics. Think of it more as a survival manual. Other films he's remembered for include Lucas and License to Drive. Haim found difficulty transitioning away from teen idol into serious roles. This, combined with drug addiction, led to a decline in his career. He made attempts to get clean, but before he was able to get his career back on track, he died suddenly of pneumonia at the age of 38. From the Great White North to the land down under, we've crossed hemispheres and now find ourselves in Australia. Fremantle Cemetery is in Western Australia. This is where legendary rock vocalist Bon Scott is laid to rest. Scott sang with a couple of bands before joining ACDC as its lead singer in 1974. The band's popularity grew in Australia and eventually internationally. Their 1979 album, Highway to Hell, would reach the top 20 in the United States. But just as the band was on the verge of international superstardom, they were dealt a devastating blow. In February 1980, Bon Scott was found dead in his car at the age of 33. He died of acute alcohol poisoning, death by misadventure. After his death, ACDC considered disbanding, but decided to soldier on, replacing Scott with Brian Johnson, and releasing their most successful album, Back in Black, as a tribute to Bon Scott, who is considered one of the greatest heavy metal vocalists of all time. The statue of the legendary rocker is located at Fremantle Fishing Boat Harbor by the waterfront. Hopping over to the other side of the continent, we reach Lismore Memorial Park. Here we find Winifred Atwell. She was a Trinidadian pianist who enjoyed great success in Australia and Britain in the 1950s. She was classically trained, but gained notoriety as a boogie-woogie and ragtime pianist. One of her most popular stage routines was to begin playing classical music on a grand piano before moving over to an old battered upright piano and performing some of her hits such as Black and White Rag or Poor People of Paris. She sold over 20 million records and was the first black performer to have a number one hit on the UK singles charts. She died from a heart attack at the age of 69. We now head to Northern Suburbs Memorial Gardens, where we find a monument to another of Australia's legendary rock stars, Michael Hutchins. In the late 1970s he formed the band In Excess. He was the lead singer of the band, whose hits include Never Tear Us Apart, Devil Inside, and Need You Tonight. I've got to let you know. On the morning of November 22, 1997, Hutchins was found dead in his Sydney hotel room. Suicide by hanging. He was 37. If you saw part three of our tour of Forest Lawn Hollywood Hills, you'll recall our visit to Michael's grave there. After his death, Michael was cremated, his ashes divided among loved ones. A portion of his ashes were interred at Forest Lawn in California, and a portion were scattered in Rose Bay, Australia. This memorial is a cenotaph, meaning there are no physical remains here. In Victoria is Box Hill Cemetery. Sidney Meyer was a businessman who founded Meyer, Australia's largest chain of department stores. He was also a philanthropist who, during the Great Depression, decided that rather than lay off employees, he and his staff would cut their own wages in order to keep people employed. He died suddenly at the age of 56. We book the next flight to France and, jet lag notwithstanding, visit Tocqueville in Normandy on the west coast of France. This is the tomb of Alexis de Tocqueville. He was a French writer, diplomat, and political scientist known for his works Democracy in America, which he wrote after taking trips to study American society. It's now considered one of the great classical works on political science. He died of tuberculosis at the age of 53. To Paris now, and one of France's most storied cemeteries, the most visited necropolis in the world, Père Lachaise, where greats like Oscar Wilde, Edith Piaf, and Chopin are laid to rest. 
Also here is one of America's great music legends, Jim Morrison. He was a singer and songwriter, best known as the lead singer of the 60s rock band, The Doors, which formed in Venice, California in 1965. Their first major hit was Light My Fire, from their eponymous debut album. Come on, baby, light my fire. Other hits include Break On Through to the Other Side, Riders of the Storm, and my favorite Doors song, People Are Strange. People are strange when you're a stranger, faces look ugly when you're alone. While in Paris with his girlfriend in 1971, Morrison was found dead in the bathtub at the age of 27. The official cause of death was listed as heart failure, though no autopsy was performed, so the true cause of death may never be known. He was buried here in Paris, and his grave remained unmarked until a decade later when a bust of Morrison was placed on his grave. Over the years, though, the site has been subjected to regular vandalism and desecration, including the theft of the bust, so the cemetery has partitioned off this section with a fence. The Greek inscription on his tombstone roughly translates as true to his own spirit. Since his death, Morrison has become one of pop culture's most iconic figures. He was portrayed by Val Kilmer in the 1991 film, The Doors. Au revoir, France. Guten Tag, Germany. Here at Friedhof Schoenberg III in Berlin is one of the great screen legends of classic cinema, Marlene Dietrich. She began her career as a cabaret singer in Germany, which would lead to her breakout role in The Blue Angel in which she portrayed a cabaret singer. The next year she would star in Morocco, also as a cabaret singer, in a role that would earn her an Academy Award nomination. She would become one of the highest paid and best known actresses of the era, a glamorous and exotic figure in films like Shanghai Express and Desire, often collaborating with filmmaker Joseph von Sternberg. And she would deliver powerful performances in films like Judgment at Nuremberg and Witness for the Prosecution, during the war, she was also known for her humanitarian efforts, fighting Nazism, performing for the troops, and hosting German and French refugees. Marlene Dietrich lived to be 90 and was buried here alongside her family, not far from where she was born. Also here in Berlin is St. Matthaus Kirchhoff Cemetery. Here we find the Brothers Grimm, Jacob and Wilhelm. They were cultural researchers and writers who collected folklore during the 19th century. They were among the first and best known collectors of folk tales who helped popularize many of the fairy tales we have all come to know so well. They would travel from village to village and collect oral narrations of tales like Cinderella, Hansel and Gretel, Snow White, Rapunzel, Sleeping Beauty, and more eventually publishing them in a collection called Grimm's Fairy Tales, first published in 1812. These tales have inspired countless productions over the years, and the Brothers Grimm even got their own film, starring Heath Ledger and Matt Damon. Southwest of Berlin, not far from Frankfurt, is Südfriedhof Cemetery. Here we find a notorious fighter pilot by the name of Manfred von Richthofen, known to history as the Red Baron. He flew for Germany during World War I and was considered the ace of aces. He became a national hero to Germany and a respected foe to his enemies. His nickname stems from his nobility and the red color of his airplane. Von Richthofen was shot down in 1918, though the identity of who it was who delivered the fatal shot remains unclear to this day. The Red Baron is often referenced in popular culture, including Snoopy, who fancies himself a World War I flying ace, always on the hunt for the elusive Red Baron. Eccoci, siamo finalmente arrivati in Italia. Cimitiero Monumentale in Rimini, Italy. This monument marks the final resting place of not just one of Italy's greatest filmmakers, but one of the most influential filmmakers of all time, Federico Fellini. This sculpture represents a ship's prow, ships often featuring prominently in Fellini's films, including the Oscar-winning film Amacord. He was nominated a staggering 12 times for an Academy Award, his films winning four in the foreign language category. Other of his films considered among the greats include La Dolce Vita and Eight and a Half. 
Fellini was married to actress Giulietta Massina. She starred in a number of her husband's films, including La Strada and The Knights of Cabiria. She died from cancer just a few months after her husband. We now head north a few thousand miles to Stockholm, Sweden, and a cemetery, you'll forgive me, I won't even try to pronounce. I don't need any more mispronunciations on my record. Translated though, it means the Northern Cemetery. It was founded in 1827 and is home to many Swedish notables. Among them we find inventor and philanthropist Alfred Nobel. His most famous invention was dynamite, literally, which he produced by combining nitroglycerin with other stabilizing agents. His vision for the explosive was to use it in construction, quarrying rock, etc. Derivatives of dynamite would also be used in bombs and cannons, which, used extensively throughout the world in wars, made Nobel a very rich man. Years before his own death, Alfred read an obituary prematurely written for him, which branded him the merchant of death. The fact that his inventions were used to such devastating ends drove him to depression, but also inspired him to bequeath his fortune to the Nobel Prizes, an annual award to those who advance the causes of science and peace for the betterment of humanity. Northwest of here, a few sections in, we find the grave of Ingrid Bergman, an icon of Hollywood's golden age. She was born right here in Stockholm, and got her start as a youth performing in Swedish films in the 30s. In 1939, David Oselznik brought her to Hollywood to star in Intermezzo. The success of the film made her a star, and a few years later she would land a role for which she is best known today as Ilsa in Casablanca. Said I would never leave you. And you never will. I've got a job to do too. Where I'm going, you can't follow. What I've got to do, you can't be any part of. She's also remembered as Alicia in the 1946 Alfred Hitchcock film Notorious. She won three Oscars in her career for Gaslight, Anastasia, and Murder on the Orient Express. She's tied with Meryl Streep for a number of Oscars, both won behind Katharine Hepburn's record of four for acting. Her final acting role was in the TV miniseries, A Woman Called Golda. Ingrid died from cancer on her 67th birthday. A portion of her ashes were scattered in the sea off the west coast of Sweden, the remainder interred here with her family. Finally we head several kilometers south of here to a cemetery that translates as the Woodland Cemetery appropriately named as it sits nestled in these beautiful Scandinavian woods. Here amongst the trees is another of the great stars of classic cinema, Greta Garbo. She began her acting career in the 20s in Sweden. After catching the eye of Louis B. Mayer, she was brought to Hollywood, where she quickly made a splash. Her role in the 1926 silent film Flesh and the Devil made her an international star. Her iconic low, rich voice was first heard in the 1930 film Anna Christie, earning her her first of four Oscar nominations. Her success continued in films like Grand Hotel and Camille. I could kill you for this. I'm not worth killing, Arnold. I've loved you as much as I could love. If that wasn't enough, I'm not to blame. After making Two-Faced Woman in 1941, she retired from the screen at the age of 35, after making just around 30 films. After that she shunned all publicity and became fiercely private. She died in New York at the age of 84, and was laid to rest here in her native Sweden. And that concludes our tour. What are some of your favorite memories of the stars we visited today? Share them in the comments below, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more famous grave tours. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.